Hey everybody, Sean here with DTF Tech Talk. I'm the owner of Hometown Hype Custom Apparel in the Franklin, Pennsylvania. So I made a video last week about changing my encoder strip. So uh, you guys may have seen it. So the encoder strip is right here, right? It's this little kind of semi-opaque piece of film that goes across the entirety of the printer. And from my understanding, it's almost like a ruler for the printer to understand like where it is left and right um, in relation to uh, the print platform. So I was having issues where either my white head results were coming out like blurry or my CMYK head. And what I mean by blurry is like, let me see here. Let me see if I can find the example right here. So like if you look really close, if you look like really close at these lines, right? They don't match up perfectly. So every time the printer goes left and right and it's doing a bi-directional print, right? Which means it's printing and laying down ink. When the printer moves to the left, it's laying down ink. And when it moves to the right, it's laying down ink, right? That's called bi-directional printing. So the printer's going laying ink, laying ink, laying ink, right? And it's the most, it's the fastest way to print. So it's laying ink in both directions versus just laying ink in one direction and then returning to lay ink in the same direction, right? And that's a setting you can do inside your settings inside print exp. You want to do bi-directional printing when you can because it's twice as fast. Um, but you could have additional issues with that, which is what I'm having now. So what I'm going to try today, since I changed my encoder strip, I <sighs> The results seem the same, right? They seem, I didn't seem to get much improvement. So now what I'm going to do today is I'm going to change the encoder strip sensor. So luckily when I got my printer, it came with a bunch of extra supplies and parts. One of the things it came with was this little bad boy, which is an encoder strip sensor. I'm gonna go through how I'm going to change this. Uh, so come along with me and I'll, uh, I'll show you now. Okay guys, so welcome back. So I'm realizing there's really no good way to access this encoder strip. So what I need to do is I need to get in here. Let me focus this camera, right? This is the sensor I wanna change. You see it that has the, the white connector right there, right? And you can see there, this is the encoder strip from the side, right? And the encoder strip is in between this little sensor right here, all right? And it's giving a reading of where the printer is on the pendulum swing. So I'm not gonna record myself doing it, because it's really tight. It's a really tight space. I'm not going to be able to get a good camera angle in there. There's no access from the back anywhere. Well, maybe that's not true. Does this swing up? No, that doesn't. That does not swing up. So, yeah, it's unfortunate all this stuff's here because I could it'd be nice to just like reach through right here, but that's where all the boards are. So, um, anyway, I'm just, what I'm going to do is there's just two little hex screws. On either side, I'm just going to loosen each of those, disconnect the sensor, and then put the new one back in its place. So wish me luck. I'll let you know how it goes here in a minute. Okay, guys. Hello. I am back. It's been it's been like 45 minutes to an hour. That was horrible. <laughs> that was really, really tough. So um, if you look in here, okay, this sensor is essentially held on, okay? You can see the one bolt right there and there's another one on the other side now it was easy enough to get that first one off but the second one you're you're basically reaching behind the board blind you're just kind of having to feel your way around with a with a allen key and it was really difficult so i got it off uh with a little bit of struggle um i got the new sensor put in and uh, attached and I got the first screw in with a few tries the second screw or bolt that I had to put in was completely blind it took me probably about 50 tries so uh, I kept dropping it I had to move the head to the side uh, find the little teeny tiny little screw I just dropped and then bring it back so if I had a magnet hex key that would have worked way better um, but like I said you're gonna do a blind I tried to move it down to this side thinking like I'd be able to at least see what I was doing but then I'd have to work with my left hand and my left hand you really got to reach in far right and then have to be able to to be coordinated with your left hand and then turn it while your hands reach it was very difficult 
that didn't work. So, right, so I, I had to like reach my left hand in here like this and then like work at a really micro scale to get the thing in. My left hand just wasn't coordinated enough to do that. I eventually I moved it over here to the right side and I brought the head all as far over as I could and, and just out of pure luck, I eventually one time blindly, I was able to get it and thread it in and just tighten it down. So that really sucked. Maybe there was an easier way to do it, but that's what I experienced. So now I'm gonna go on my computer, see if I'm getting any better results. I'll be back in a minute. Hey everybody, so I did some testing. I did some more alignmenting. And you can see here, let's get you in the light. Look at that. So the CMYK results that I'm getting, um, nice and crisp. The white results that I'm getting, nice and crisp. Look at that alignment, guys. Woo. That's how you know your printer's dialed in. You to get those super even margins on every side of the print head. Um, so I no longer have a different bi-directional adjustment for each my white and my CMYK print head. By replacing that sensor, I'm back on track. So must have had some crud on it. Who knows, right? It, it, it probably just gets dirty over time. When I replaced the encoder strip, it was filthy. Um, so overall, I'm glad I did it. Yes, I think it was one of the hardest uh, fixes I've had to do on this printer to date, just because it's so inaccessible, right? Uh, it's not difficult intellectually, it's just physically difficult um, to get the printer head, or I'm sorry, that, that screw, that bolt back in there. So anyway, I just wanted to show you guys, let you guys know what the results were after changing that encoder strip sensor. Hopefully this helps someone. Have a great day and goodbye.